Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brian, and uh, basically I make videos about my 2019 Infinity Q50S uh, Signature Edition, and uh, just make videos about um, tuning the car, um, changing the oil, um, putting brakes on, or uh, putting new tires on the car, just uh, randomly doing uh, certain things to the car. Uh, to uh, personalize it and make it run better. Um, in this uh, episode of this video here, oh, and I have about 30 videos online on YouTube, so you can check those out. Um, again, today, uh, I was just going to check my cat, my little catch can, and it just makes for a perfect time to make a video as you do maintenance on the car. And then uh, I'm going to just take the opportunity while I'm checking uh, my catch can. I already made a video and my camera's crapping out and I can't transfer the video to my computer um, by the means that I do it. So just having to start it all over again. That's why it's already taken apart. But um, it's not difficult to take it uh, off the car, uh, take the contents of the can and the can portion and put it in a small jar so we can just take a look at that and see the amount. Um, I uh, changed the oil, I mean, uh, I checked the catch can at about 4,000 miles last time, and now I'm approaching just shy of 5,000 miles. So 1,000 miles just on, on this content, and I drove the car uh, probably uh, the hardest that I have in its 5,000 miles. So, um, God, I got bugs everywhere. Um, so... So, you know, we'll, we'll look at the contents. It's uh, I am tuned. This is a real rear wheel drive car. Uh, so, uh, and then I want to go into uh, the you know the internals of that of this catch can, the Mishimoto catch can that I have, and why I think it's the best uh, catch can option for this Infinity Q50 uh, and, and Q60. Um, there are other uh, good catch cans on the market for other cars, the Dodge and the Mustangs and and Supras and all kinds of different things, but not all those manufacturers are making catch cans that just bolt directly up to this car. Um, and, and, and I even think this, this is a, uh, Mishimoto is, is a company that uh, uh, actually, you know, tests their products and puts a lot of development into their products. They don't just make something and just make it fit on the car and not test it. Um, you know, Mishimoto actually has a rigorous testing of their, their products. They don't just make catch cans. They make um, heat exchangers. They make uh, all kinds of different radiators. They make uh, intercoolers for a lot of different cars. They make, they make a lot of different products. So they're just not a uh, oil catch can manufacturer or, you know, what they claim is, you know, what they are. So they make a lot of products. And another important note, uh, uh, important part to note is that, um, you know, when you go to serious uh, websites that uh, handle performance parts and, and different automobile parts, I mean, you go look at Jags and you go look at Summit Racing online, then you will find Mishim all the full line of Mishimoto parts. You won't find, um, you know, add one catch cans on their website because... They only have tried, true, tested products, and they have to meet certain standards for them to sell to sell the products. So, again, Mishimoto has all their products on there on on, on those high end, multi large large companies web uh, websites or their dealer, uh, not dealer, but their uh, uh, I can't even think of the name of those big mega stores, you know, online that sell parts. But, you know, Summit Racing and Jags is associated with an NHRA, the drag racing, um, and they have parts, um, you know, for a lot of those 5,000 to 10,000 horsepower cars advertised, you know, or you can get, you know, I guess, you know, those people can buy a lot of those parts um, through their catalogs. Um, so, I mean, yeah. So I'm just going to get into um, first why... Uh, of the internals of this cash can because some people may not have, I mean, you have to assume there are a lot of people that, that maybe don't know how a cash can works and what makes for a good catch can. Now I'm going to try to go into that um, just right now before we look at my content. So I'm going to move the camera up a little closer and hopefully my camera's focusing this time. Uh, 
Okay. So we we have a catch can. Um, you got your your dirty air line coming in. That's the the oil and the and the and the blow by that's in 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 the crankcase. And so there's a there's a couple of element of things coming through here that are are not good to have dumped back into the engine. So we have the catch can, the catch can that is going to catch those things. Okay, but with that process when this engine is hot and it gets really warm and i mean not not warm but hot then those gases inside inside the the crankcase and that oil vapor is superheated if you want to say it's you know superheated and so it's a it can be into a vapor type liquid uh you know uh steam you know you you, you don't can't put steam in a jar and slosh you know the water around when it's in this in the format of steam so you need to have a way to capture the fluid that's coming into the catch can and we're going to start out with this is a baffle and you hear baffled catch cans baffles baffle one two three if they're all the same a baffle the definition of a baffle is, you know, if you want to think of it as a baffled uh, gas tank, um, you know, you have the gas tanks uh, split up into different parts, so um, smaller compartments that are linked together so that when you're driving around on a road course, your gas isn't sloshing around and you have your fuel pump on one end of the, of the fuel tank. And as you turn the corner, all the gas rushes to one side and then your fuel, fuel pump starves. It's, it makes it to where, um, it, it'll stay a little bit more, uh, you know, um, equally in the gas tank. So again, with a a baffle, this is the baffle. And so what it does, this is a single baffle. I mean, you don't really need many baffles. You just need one baffle. So when the uh, dirty, uh, you know, moisture filled uh, vapor comes in it's not a solid it's in a, it's in a vapor form so when it comes in it hits these little deflectors and the deflectors um, direct it uh, to hit something where it can kind of condense into a, a more of a fluid and then it drips onto this baffle plate and then through the holes in the baffle plate the oil will drop down into the can and here's the can portion and it screws on. So you've got the can. So the oil is 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 collecting in the canister here. And so what the baffle does is you're jostling around in the car and you're racing around corners and you're hitting bumps. The oil doesn't bounce back up and then come outside the clean hose. Go you know into that hose and then go back into your motor and then contaminate your gas um, or you know end up on the back of your intake valves. So what Mishimoto, that's what, that's what the baffle does. The baffle is not the main, main component that captures the vapor that comes in. You know, again, a vapor is, is, a, is air with, with the oil particles in it. So it's, it's superheated. So it's steam, it's moisture. Um, and so you need that to cool down. And when that, 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 um, fluid or the, you know, the, Contents coming through the dirty hose. Um, that's you need to have a way to to uh, make that kind of transform into the oil back into the oil, so it's collected into the container. Um, so another thing that's important to have is this 50 micron bronze filter. Um, it's kind of like a stone filter. It's not a screen filter. It's it's a very porous, like a stone almost. Um, but you know that so this is the key component of of this uh, oil catch can is this bronze filter so this bronze filter i'm just going to go into a little bit more detail about what a filter does and a lot of the other catch cans don't have a filter um, again it's not just a, a foam filter or a screen filter it's a stone like filter i don't know how the best way to explain it but i'm going to bring you over here this is basically, for people that don't know, 
This is a compressor. And when the compressor is compressing air, it superheats it heats the air up. It doesn't superheat it, but it heats the air up and into the tank, and then it gets filled with moisture. And when you are using a, a, a air tool, you don't want moisture going into your, your tools. Also, too, if you're painting or uh, different tools, you don't want moisture flowing out of the tool. And when it's in here and when it's being pumped in here and getting heated, it turns that to a, a moisture-filled air. So you need a moisture trap. This is what a moisture trap looks like. And they're almost on all compressors of all different sizes. Um, because, like I said, the air tools don't like to have moisture put into them because the internals can rust. So you want to capture that moisture. So, again, when it comes out of the compressor and... and trying to go straight into your hose that plugs into there, you've got a moisture trap. And look what's in the moisture trap. It's a stone. It's a micron stone. So they, all these filters use this stone. And so when the air comes out of the compressor and comes into the container and then goes up and wants to come out, this micron stone uh, separates the moisture from the air and, uh, and, and the moisture collects in the bottom of the bowl and clean air comes out to your hose to your your air tools so without that air stone in there you're going to get moisture in your air tools there's not any baffles this is the only way for for most part that this is going to capture and separate that water from that air that moisture so that's a that is a moisture trap um, and also can capture, you know, particles in your air because you don't want to be uh, introducing, you know, small dust particles or different things to your air tools. But that that works for an air compressor and the air gets hot and then it transfers the fluid or the vapor into the air and you have to separate that. That's the way that works. So why would you have a catch can that works very similar, similarly? and not have a filter that is going to catch and separate the moisture. Let me put this back on. Capture the, capture the vapor, the oil vapor, and the other contaminants that are coming through the hose, and then it's going to introduce it back into, uh, onto your intake valves and then, and then into your uh, uh, cylinder. And it's gonna and it's gonna degrade the quality of your fuel. The more contaminants you put in, not just clean air, but you put in contaminants with that clean air into the combustion chamber, then you're diluting your your gas and your octane. And so that's why it's it's so key to have a micron filter, not just one layer, two layer, three layers of baffles, because that's not gonna stop. The can the superheated air coming in, and that's not that that alone is not going to catch the oil out of the air flowing through this system because this gets really hot. When I run my car for an hour and I come and I try to touch this can, this can is as hot as my cylinder head pretty much, and and it has to cool down within a couple of hours. So it's coming in, it's going into the can and directly coming out of the can and then going back into the engine. So you gotta have a filter, and that's this micron filter, micron, 50 micron filter. That's the size of the particles that, that, uh, to a point that it's gonna allow to flow through that, and and then it's gonna expel the rest. So you gotta have a filter, and there's not a lot of other catch cans that have a filter, um, you know, a, a micron filter attached to them. So that is really really key. So that's the difference between a Mishimoto and a triple layer baffle catch can that most people go, ooh, ah, oh, triple layer twister tucker catch can sounds really, really cool. And it's made of shiny aluminum and colored aluminum. But in actuality, I mean, these are the components exactly that you want in an oil catch can. Um, so with that stated, we're going to take a look. I've already done my contents into a little jar. Thousand miles, run the car a lot harder, and, and a, you capture, let's see, the lighting in here is not, not very good, even though I've added lights in here. Let's see. So, 
It's, it's not just oil content. It is oil blow by, but there's water. There's, there's water in here from a moisture and condensation. Um, that's why it's so fluidy. Oil does not flow uh, like that, just pure oil. And there's also, uh, you know, a water vapor, and there's a little bit of fuel that's, that's likely in there, um, you know, and, and some other contaminants that happen uh, during the combustion process that slip by the rings and get blown down into the crankcase and then get passed on through the PVC system. That's pretty watery. Uh, that is definitely though uh, main content is probably oil, but that's definitely you don't want any of that. It's not just oil. People think it's just capturing oil, but it's capturing probably four or five other components that are flowing through uh, the PVC system, PVC system, the positive crankcase, uh, positive crankcase vent system, and then it's capturing it and then inserting it back into the engine to be reburned. Uh, and again, so catch cans, man, it's a lot more than just, you know, a simple uh, a can between the lines that's catching. you got to have a filter. So I'm not sponsored by Mishimoto, and I don't get free Mishimoto parts, but I think it's just important to understand things and how they work and make sure you're getting the best product for the bang for your buck. Um, and that's, I mean, that's what I try to aspire to buy and, and spend my money on. And if you buy or if you get free products, you need to be very upfront that you're getting this free because when you get things for free, it tends to sway your, your presentation, uh, your overall outlook. And, you know, if you want to continue to uh, get free products in the future, then, then you've got to, you've got to speak favorably of that product. Cause if you're like, I hate this product, they're not going to send you any other product and then you're not continuing to, to get free products. So always keep that in mind. And if you're all our YouTubers and you review products, I think it's always key. And it, I've seen it many times where people are very honest. They're saying, Hey, I got this product for free and I'm going to do an honest review. Hey, just mention that you got something for free and let people make their decisions from there. So with that said, I did not get this free. So, um, you know, and it is my opinion, but it is a, a uh, I think a strong opinion uh, on a, on a cat can, uh, and you know about the design and the function of it. So, with that said, um, thanks for tuning in. Like the video, uh, subscribe if you want to. If you like my content, I'm going to be doing some future things here, modifications to the car, and I think people will be very interested because there's not a lot of uh, videos of the things I'm going to, or the next thing that I'm going to do. Um, and I will uh, just leave it at that. So again, thanks for tuning in. Have a good night and hope you enjoyed the video and found it informative. Again, thank you for tuning in and have a good night.